What's going on YouTube? Uh, JT's are born here. Welcome to episode number 15 of the Godzilla Rewatch. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the terror of Mechagodzilla, which is the direct sequel to uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974. So this one, even at a young age, uh, it never I, clicked with me quite as much as the previous entry, but there are a lot of good things about this one. Godzilla's entrance, for instance, is one of the best moments of the entire franchise. I think it's it might be my personal favorite Godzilla entrance in a Godzilla film because it comes out like all mysterious. You kind of see him silhouetted in the background. He breathes his radioactive fire on Titanosaurus, and it's like, shh, and you're like, uh, the music turns, and you see him, like, him just emerge, like, out of the shadows. And it's like, dun 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 And then he goes into a fight scene with Titanosaurus. So, yeah. So, this one picks up the events after the last one. Um, for some reason, the King Caesar is not in this movie at all. He's not even mentioned. I'm like, you, um, the job's not done. Mechagodzilla is still around. Can't they just get that royal family to wake him up again? Or maybe the simians in that killed him. Uh, I don't know exactly. But, yes. So, the simians are back. The main dude, I guess, had a brother or something. I don't know all the details. Like, I sometimes forget little tidbits in here. But, yeah, basically, like, the same actor is back as the villain this time. This villain, he doesn't have the cool factor of the last one. He's a lot more ruthless and just more of a soap show pad. Like, there's a part where he starts whipping his henchmen. Like, Jesus, this is all in a Godzilla film. He starts whipping his henchmen, and then he just, you know, they all start, like, he's like, now I sentence you to death. I'm like, jeez, holy crap, this is just a... Uh, Godzilla movie is getting quite a, it's getting pretty sadistic and dark here. And that's one thing I do love about the Terror of Mecha Godzilla. It is one of the darkest films of the Godzilla franchise. It's dealing with ideas of like, uh, there's a girl, Katsura, who like uh, was a human, so they like turned her into a robot, forced her to do things against her will. The, the score, I really like the score by Akari Ifukube, because, or Ifukube, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know. I, I'm just going to say Ifukube. So, but anyways, his score has got, like, a dark universal horror element to it, and I really appreciate that about it. It's, like, uh, it really is haunting and helps with the atmosphere. And that's one thing I appreciate this one. It's, like, it's got, like, kind of, like, a, like, almost like a hammer sci-fi, uh, like, it's almost got, like, a hammer horror film type vibe I got from this one. So with some of the dark elements throughout this one. Um, yeah, it is definitely not as light as, like, the previous one. Like, the, the last one was a lot more upbeat in tone, I felt like, but this one definitely goes even darker with Mechagodzilla. And it is a direct sequel, so it picks up right after that with people getting... Like, I mean, the same actors, I don't know if they're playing the same characters as the previous one, but some of the, like, one of the same actors in the last one just gets killed right away by Titanosaurus. You got girls controlling uh, Titanosaurus, like, psychically. You got this Dr. Mifune guy who really hates uh, mankind for shunning him and, like, watching his wife kind of die. So, yeah, there's a lot of, like, really creepy, eerie stuff going on throughout this one. Um there's also this really, like, awkward romance between, like, Katsura and this other guy, who was, like, one of the actors from Godzilla versus Megalon. I didn't really buy it all that much. It felt, it was, like, it felt kind of forced and tacked on, like, whenever I see, uh, if I watch the English version, I kind of laugh. He's like, Katsura, I love you. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is just, it's so hammy. Um, but, but I do appreciate so Like, it, it, it makes me laugh. Um, Titanosaurus himself is a kaiju, his roar is, is quite annoying. I mean, I think a lot of people, like, agree on this, but Titanosaurus roar is like, rah, 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 rah. It's, it's, it, it isn't one of the best roars in the series. It does get kind of uh, annoying for me personally. And as a monster himself, I think he's just okay. He's more fun to play as in the video games than just kind of watching him in this movie. I am disappointed, though, that we don't see King Caesar show up at all in this thing. I'm like, wouldn't it have been cool if he just showed up, like, right out of the blue, like to continue the battle, we would have got two on two, but this stacks the odds more against Godzilla this time around, because he has to do this shit all himself, he doesn't have King Caesar to back him up, he's facing the more powerful Mechagodzilla, and he has to face off against Titanosaurus, Godzilla's obviously more powerful than Titanosaurus, but Godzilla going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Titanosaurus and Mechagodzilla at the same time, it proves to be quite a challenge for him, Godzilla does get the shit beaten out of him, until King would have to kind of, and Interpol have to kind of come in to play, and, you know, help him out, a bit, and he gets off his ass, and he just comes back in, takes down Titanosaurus, rips the head off of Mechagodzilla again, which, however, they improved the design, so now Mechagodzilla has, like, some other little, like, laser thing on top of the head, so, yeah, so they do, like, um, add, build on the fact that the last design had that issue, and Godzilla, like, 
he's like, okay, I beat you last time via this way, and then now I'm going to try and beat you again this this time. But, oh, shit, it doesn't work this time. They came more prepared. So I appreciate that about this. It carries over some good continuity from the previous film. Uh, there is one really cheesy moment in the movie that always kind of makes me laugh, and there's these dumb kids, and they're just like... Godzilla almost, like, runs to save the children at one point in this movie. I, I feel like he's just like, the kid's like, oh, Godzilla, save us! It kind of reminds me a bit of a Gamera movie here and there where they're like, Mechagodzilla's in the way because these kids are really stupid and dumb. They're like, oh, let's go check out the giant monster. Let's walk right in front of it. And then Mechagodzilla's going to squash them. Like, oh, no, Godzilla! And Godzilla runs to their aid, probably squashing them in the process. I don't exactly know. We'd never exactly see these kids again. Um, but he goes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mechagodzilla. And we get a cool final battle. I just don't think it's as exciting as the previous one. Uh, overall impressions on this one, I like some of the horror elements. I think Dr. Mifune is pretty cool as a protagonist along with the simians. But there's just something about the previous film that just worked a bit better. For instance, you don't like it. Godzilla takes a really long time to be incorporated into the plot of this one. There are some moments where it kind of does drag for me. I just felt like the last film had a more engaging storyline with Mechagodzilla coming into the fray. The Simians were a bit cooler, but this one's this one's a lot darker. Like, there's some, like, real torture going on with some of these people. So, like, as a kid, uh, and there's titties, so I guess that's a plus, too, if you want to watch the uncut version of it, but that's, that's that. Um, what else can I say about this one? I just like the previous one a bit more. I thought the Simians were a bit cooler. Now they wear these really stupid helmets, and I'm like, dude, come on, you had, like, that cool factor. And even when they're faced, they get shot, like, and, like, they don't turn back into space apes. And that always kind of disappointed me um, going back in and rewatching uh, this one after directly watching the previous film. And I thought the, the score by Ifu Kube is really good. It's got some classic Godzilla elements. And I like the way the movie ends. It's just like, okay, Godzilla's going out to the sea to rest. It does kind of get, it does get you a bit emotional. Because, let's face it, this is the end of the first series. This is the end of the first Godzilla series altogether. And it's like, okay, Godzilla's done for right now. He's going to take a little breather, but he'll be back at some point in the near future. So, it does, I do get a little bit choked up watching the end of this one. I'm like, oh, it's the end of this series. But don't worry, Sean, because we got the Heisei series right afterwards. So, at least there's that to look forward to. But anyways, uh, what are your thoughts on the terror of Mechagodzilla? Is it one of your favorites? Is it one you like? Just like, do you like it more than uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit that bell for notifications. Subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash SeanJTKing. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I really have to say about this one. Um, human cast is okay. Uh, the, there are some more interesting human characters this time around with Katsura and Dr. Mafuni. And the villain, the villain's a real piece of shit, like, savage. I, I, I do love the villain. Like, this guy is great in both movies, even though he's playing, like, two different characters. Uh, so, there's always that to look forward to. But, what do you think of Terra Mechagodzilla? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, come back tomorrow, we're going to talk about the start of the Heisei franchise with Godzilla 1985 slash The Return of Godzilla. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye then. I'll see you next time.